flowers, flowers, and flowers are in. That means gorgeous. Yep. Dwarf, lemon dwarf sunflowers. Lemon dwarf. Mm hmm. And there is a few peach in there. What is this one? Um, gold light. Mm hmm. And then this is peach. What? They're what? Foot and a half, two foot tall. Loaded. Loaded. Blooms. Like one bloom. Some of them have actually, I think I counted 12 blooms on them. So it makes a perfect arrangement. Hmm. Because it looks like you got a bunch of flowers, but you really don't. Yeah, springtime's here, so flowers and flowers. Flowers and flowers. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Row by Row Garden Show, best deggum garden show on the radio and the internet as well. Glad to have you. Got Mama Hoss. Mama Hoss and her flowers. And her flowers. I'm happy. You happy? I'm happy. What man, you it's got? It's that time of the year, ain't it? Mm hmm. Oh man, everything's rocking and rolling. Man, I got to show this right here. You showed your flowers, I got to show uh -huh. mine. I don't know if the camera's going to do this justice. Mm -hmm. Godzilla broccoli. Godzilla. This is probably off of about 10 plants at most right here. And this is a huge and harvest. we already gathered some, haven't we? Yeah, we have. I mean, look at that, how huge that is. This Godzilla is the first time for me growing it this spring. Uh, it's a great early wow. spring variety. Man, look, look at that. It. Yep. It's bigger than my hand. Yep. And it's a uh, pest. Pest really didn't bother it a whole lot. Uh, we did do a trap crop in between it and my kale, but fertility was easy. It was a very easy broccoli to grow. I was just amazed. So if you've never grown broccoli before, this is the one I'd recommend. This is it. Yeah, and it grows a big old tight head there. Man, man, look at all that. We just gonna leave them out there. Yeah, I'm gonna just leave them, leave them out, out there. Yeah. Lay them out there. Broccoli. I mean, early springtime. We most of the time don't grow a lot of broccoli come off right now but it's a great fills in that void before yeah, some yeah i really stuff. thought it'd be a little too late but it's worked that one didn't wait on look at that look at that Damn. well we gotta run away and i've got some mr big p do you have mr big p them things are huge let me hold that right there if you don't mind look how big that p is right there and the thing about these is you can eat them like a snow pea really Mm -hmm. hmm. I did some in a stir fry last week. Or you can wait. And you talk about sweet. And let them get bigger and shell them. Yeah. I don't know if you can it see. It makes the biggest pot I've ever seen for an English How pea. big that is. Yeah. Huge pots. Mm -hmm. And the vines are pretty erect too. Now you did, you did stake them up or trellis them. I did trellis them. I've got hmm. some zinnias planted amongst them. In there. Mm, I love them things raw. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about food here a lot. Today's show is about preparing. Mm -hmm. Preparing for this year. You know, is there going to be a food shortage or not? We don't know. There is some problems with our food supply chain. So we're going to talk about today how to prepare your food for this year, what you need to do and what you need to grow. It's going to be a great show. How much you need to grow. Yep, how much you need to grow. Great, great show. Let's move into some new varieties. All right. All right. First one here I want to cover is another pole bean because you know we mm -hmm. love, that's fine, you know we love pole beans. <laughs> king of the garden, king of the garden, lima pole bean. Which is a great one right there. We love that one right there. I love them because it don't take a lot of room to grow them. And you know what? We got a pickle back in stock. I talked about this one a couple we weeks ago. And we didn't have it back in stock. We got it in stock now. Uh, been a little bit of a run on pickling cucumbers this year. This is a new variety for us called Della Star Cucumber. It is probably one of the most popular varieties out here, and I'm pretty sure we're going to keep this one. This is going to be a great one right here. It's for pickling? It is for pickling, but I'm going to tell you something. It is a monitious cucumber. Monitious. Monitious. You know what a monitious means? Go ahead. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> monitious means it has both the male and the female flowers on that one plant. So you don't have to have pollinators. So you don't have to have a pollinator plant. Now we have these people, we've had two last week. In the last week, contact customer service and they say, 
My cucumber plant only has male flowers on there. Well, here's the deal, folks. First of all, I cannot remember in the last 35 years that I've been gardening that I went out there and identified the type of blooms that's on my cucumber plant. But for you that like to do that, that's okay. And then we find these people get all worked up because they look on their blooms and they got more male flowers than they thought they should have. And they want to email and they just all upset. upset. Number one, everything's going to be okay. So just calm down. You ain't got to go out there and check your blooms to find out if they're male or female. But I will tell you this. Monisha's cucumbers produce the male flower first and then produce the female flower. So don't sweat it if you got more male flowers than you do female flowers. The females are coming along. That's just natural for a monoecious variety. Great cucumber there, uniform in size, good color to it, and it's an early, thank you, and it is an early producer. Mm -hmm. Good one there. You got some of that planted? I don't, but I'm going to. Okay. I just, I got some cucumbers planted, but I'm going to plant that one. We just got that one in. So... Good deal. Yep. All right. And we still have some tom onions. Y'all want some tom onions? We still got some tom onions. And uh, so put your order in for those. Probably going to quit selling them about the mid part of May. Maybe the end of, toward the third week of May. We're going to stop selling them. It's going to be getting a little too warm. But if you don't want some up to then, hey, we got them. Tom onions. Tom onions. So let's talk about is there a food shortage? You know, there's a lot, a lot of things in the press nowadays talking about food shortage. And for good reason, we go in the grocery store sometimes and we see some shelves empty and we panic a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some things that I've noticed missing that I normally buy from week to week. But the next week they're there. Um, and we, we have a lot of ours, so I don't know that... I'm reliable to tell if there really is. You know, it's weird. We'll go in there sometimes and there'll be like, like the cereal aisle will be just, you know, mm -hmm. bare. And then there'll be plenty of other stuff. It's kind of like it's sporadic things yeah. in there. But one thing we do know is prices have drastically increased increased, and they'll continue to increase. So that's one thing I'm saying. Yeah. And that's due to inflation, which we're under what we would call hyperinflation at the moment. We have been for a while. Uh, the government's trying to counteract that a little bit by raising interest rates gradually. In my opinion, they should raise them quicker, but that's, nobody's that calling to ask me what they need to do about interest rates. <laughs> um, so we've seen raw input costs increase. Fuel prices we know up. Fertilizer prices are crazy, crazy. So all the input costs are up. i seen the article that they said this year, it will cost more to put crops in the ground than it ever has before in history. So you do you think there's going to be a shortage because pesticides, fertilizers, things to grow the food okay. are in short supply? So this is what I have seen and heard from people in the industry. We're not necessarily seeing shortages, just like fertilizer. I don't know that we've seen shortages, but we have seen dramatic price increase. So the input cost is going to be there. So... I don't think there's going to be a, a shortage in, the, in our vegetables. It's just going to cost a lot more. And then you get into, this is what a guy told me the other day, then you get into discretionary. So if it's going to cost me, say, $5 to buy this head of broccoli, then what you're going to see is people end up buying less fresh produce and they buy more canned goods because normally canned goods are cheaper than fresh vegetables are. So what some of the people in the industry are predicting is fresh produce sales are going to plummet somewhat because of the high cost. People are going to simply opt not to buy them and, and go with cheaper types of food, which makes sense. Mm. Okay. So that being said, you know, produce is going to be high and less people are going to be eating fresh vegetables if yeah. that holds true. Yeah. Then you got labor shortages. You got labor shortages. You got transportation shortages, which are real. You got all those things that can cause problems with the supply chain. They're again driving prices up. Anytime we see, uh, you know, demand that we can't meet, the price seems to go up. So, very well could be. I don't know that I'd go with a shortage as I would the, the massive price increase. That's my take on there. Yeah, and we we priced some vegetables yesterday. Yeah, did you see anything that was unusual? Well, again, I don't typically buy produce. Um, yeah, but we made a conscious effort to look at the yeah. prices. 
Um, the tomatoes seemed a little high. Two dollars a piece for a tomato. Yeah. Two dollars a piece for a tomato. Yeah. The corn was fifty cent a year. Yeah. Um, we didn't look at watermelons, but they no. high. I know. And all that kind of stuff is is it's really a it's not those fresh vegetables are not something you got to have. When you buy fresh produce, you feel like you're splurging just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because that's, you know, an upgrade compared to frozen foods or whatever. So, what can we do about it? Well, we could grow our own food. Mm -hmm. Which is what we practice and preach, folks. Um, How much food do you think you need to grow? Well, you know what? I'm glad you asked that question. So what we have is a worksheet that we're going to go over today. If I got it here somewhere. And here's the worksheet right here. And I'm going to fill this out on the show for us. And then you're going to be able to print this worksheet off in the description below. It's going to be in a PDF format. Or you can go to Hoss University uh, on the homepage of Hoss University and find this also. It's a great little worksheet. Sit down at that time with your family and go over it. Kind of give you a strategy of what you need to do. So this is going to be for a family of four because we have your parents mm -hmm. so there's four of us although they don't eat as much as two teenagers would it's still a family yeah. of four so you can uh break this down by for a family of two or one mm -hmm. or up it for more right so the first one on the list is corn mm -hmm. now this is basically we're talking about sweet corn although i am growing field corn this year that we can grind into meal and grits the number one on here is we're talking about sweet corn because that's what we like to put up just a side note on regular field corn, which is the base of a lot of our processed foods, cornmeal and grits, they last like $8 a bushel. Wow. And also seeing the futures was way up on soybeans and wheat. So that is another indication of prices jumping way up. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the worksheet here, corn. So for us, we normally every year like to process and put up our sweet corn. Of course, we like to eat it out of the garden. Cream corn. But corn comes in so quick, we have to get it and we have to process it to make it available throughout the year because it doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. Believe you me, my, my course of the fresh corn off the cob. But we like to put up, what, 52 packs? You yeah, like to do? I like to do one pack for every week uh -huh. of the year. Right. And usually about a quart bag. So around 52 quart bags is what I like to have. And then I put up extra for the soup I'm going to can. Mm -hmm. And we eat it off the cob. Mm -hmm. um, I did think about canning some this year, although that at this in the soup is canned. I did think about just canning some because it would take up a lot less room. Yep. So corn for 52 quart bags and freeze from extra soup and us to have some to eat off the cob. For ourselves, it works out to be about seven rows, about 40 feet long. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put in here. Seven rows, and we'll get my phone, my ink phone working. Your phone right. And I said, how, how long did I say? 40 foot long? Okay. And now, now last year, that's about what we did. And we put up around 52 quarts, but we shared good meat. We, we, gave, the neighbor, we gave a lot away with neighbors. We're not doing that this year. We're keeping all the corn. We may share just a little bit. We're not going to share as much as we normally do because we have anticipation to put up more soup and things like mm -hmm. that. So for corn, for four of us, sweet corn, seven rows, and I normally put this 30, 36 inches apart, whatever you feel out there, 40 feet long. Okay, tomatoes is the next thing. Tomatoes, now tomatoes are big. Tomatoes are big for us because you can can them. Mm -hmm. Salsa. Salsa. I have done ketchup before. I've done, I do a lot of um, Italian stew, which I use for spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm and chilies. Um, we use a lot of tomatoes. So I normally can about 25 quarts of the stewed tomatoes. Yeah. And then I do about 25 quarts of just juice. Yeah. And then I like the romas for my salsa. So this, let's just go with that. This year I got way more tomatoes because I'm doing that little small trial out here. We're gonna have, and I'm growing some tomatoes for some friends that can't seem to grow their own. Mm. I'm not calling their names, but they have trouble growing their own tomatoes. So I have volunteered to grow them, to give them some. So we normally grow about 
two rows about 30 foot long which is a plenty yeah. of tomatoes plenty we give them away like crazy so i'm gonna say you want to say one row of regular tomatoes one row of, of romas no i think two two rows Beans, okay. I'm going to do all that. I'm going to say 30 foot long. That's going to be about what we need, what we normally grow. is two rows, 30 foot long. And you can put some, the ones we're growing this year, Shelby. Put you some Romans in there, maybe a half row of Romans in there to help with the sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beans. Beans. I, I'm out of beans. Out of beans. And beans are easy to put up. They're easy to grow. And we grow, we're growing the bush beans for this. Mm -hmm. Although we like the pole beans, but we primarily use the bush beans for our processing. Mm -hmm. So about 30 quarts is what I like to have of beans. Now I do some beans and potatoes also. Again, I like to have um, one for every week of the year. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about basically 50 quarts. Time you put what you can and yeah. put it with the potatoes. Yeah. Okay, 50 quarts. And for beans is one of those things that I normally plant, just like now, I got two plantings of beans. I got one that's fixed and start blooming, and I just planted one. So I got succession plantings of beans going on. And one row, 30 foot long, is a plenty. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? Yeah. Because you'll gather them usually three or four times. Yeah. And then you can plant you another succession plant after that. Summer squash is a... Ooh, that's a good one. It don't take many of those. No, it doesn't take many of those. Um, we like to eat those fresh as well. Yeah. I have canned them before, and I have frozen. I tend to like the frozen better. Really? Yeah. Okay. They hold their texture a little bit better than the canned. Canned. Mm -hmm. For summer squash, that is. Yeah. So we're talking about 15 quarts and around 20 pints. Uh, excuse me, 20 pints. 15 yeah. quarts, 20 pints of, of squash is what we'll do. Uh, Man, one row, 15 foot long, mm -hmm. is a plant. And I normally do the same thing there. I normally do two plants. In fact, I got two plants going now. In fact, I got three plants. And summer squash, I kind of group the zucchini in with that too. Oh yeah, zucchini is a summer squash. So we'll do an early, early crop, and then I got another one coming on. So we like to have the fresh squash throughout the springtime. If we give an overload of any of those, we just put them up. Mm -hmm. Winter squash, and this here's the bonus, y'all, the winter yeah. squash. So I got some red curry planted, and we're mm -hmm. going to plant some more. We can plant those throughout the summer. Yeah, throughout I those like summer. some delicata. I canned the delicata last year. Awesome, awesome. Whoops. Well, basket Your basket fell over. Um, I only did about 10 quarts and we went through them Quick. quickly. I could eat those things out of the you jar. You did. I think I'm going to show you did. Yeah, I think I did too. So we're planning on doing about 15 quarts of those this year. And I'm going to tell you, the nut thing about those, if you don't process them, they store well underneath the barn. Yeah. Three to four months. Easy out of those right there. Uh, the delicatas, you're probably going to get about 30 days out of those. Those red curious, we should get three months out of those. Easy. So you really plant like a block. I do plant not a really block. A row. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say seven rows, and those are like 20 feet long. Yep. So it's kind of a small block there. I put that in the wrong spot. Uh -oh. Okay, cucumbers. Cucumbers. Now, I do the sweet pickles, which I'm out of. Mm-hmm with Momo's recipe, mm -hmm. um, bread and butter pickles, and then I also do dill. Mm -hmm. So, and then we eat a lot of fresh pickles. Yep. I do a lot of refrigerator pickles to eat along. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take that many to grow. It doesn't. Man, because we use these hybrid varieties that really pump them out. I'm gonna say, man, I'm going to say two rows of 20 feet. To be honest with you, I think one row of 20 yeah, feet would do. I think we'll have plenty of I'm going to do away. one to two. Yeah, one to two rows of 20 feet. And I got the same thing with that. I got two plants of those going. So what you could do is do like I do. Plant one row, and that's what I got. It was one row. And then wait a little while, plant another row. So you have a total of two rows for your spring harvest. Mm -hmm. Potatoes, another great good one here because you they dig store. them. store. You don't have to do anything to them. You just put them, although you do can some. Mm -hmm. I do can some with my green beans. Mm -hmm. um, so I do some of that to have. They'll last us, what, around four to five yeah, months? Yeah, easy. And then I like to have them 
canned after that. So 15 quarts is what we're figuring on. So we've got two rows. Plus our, what we eat. And plus what yeah. we eat. we got two rows near about 30 feet long. Okra, 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 okra. okra. Don't take a lot of okra. Uh, so you like to use okra for your soup? I like to use okra for my soup, um, but we eat a lot of fresh okra, stewed, fried, grilled, roasted. Yep. Um, you just can't have too much okra. Uh -uh. So what do you think? Our row this year is 30 feet. Yeah, one row is 30 feet. That's feet. plenty. I think that's about what we had last year. Yeah. Onions, another one of those great ones that really puts off for you in a... Uh, Put them underneath the bar. Mm -hmm. Use them for all your processing things that you can make, like soup and things like right. that. Right. Then um, dehydrate them. Mm -hmm. Put them know. underneath the bar and you have fresh onions for a long time, mm -hmm. six months. Same thing with garlic. Yep. I normally plant a little more onions than most people probably do. I'm going to say I had one row, and my one row was at least 70 feet this year. Yeah. Garlic. Mm. Don't take much garlic. No, but you didn't plant enough last year. Yeah. Now we're talking about elephant garlic. Yeah. Which you like to put in your soups and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it stores, I mean. Yeah, it does. It stores good. What do you think? Six to eight months. You're growing some of your root pouches now. You think a 15 foot row is enough for that? Yeah. yeah. And then once you have left over, you can save and for seed. And yeah, for your seed. Yeah. For your seed garlic the next year. Peppers is another one that we got to have. All right, for salsa, Gotta have cooking, them. everything. Don't take much of them. The main thing is having a good variety. Yeah, need the banana, the cubanel, pimento. Mm -hmm. For your soups and right. stuff. Right, a mixture of sweet, hot, yep. mild. Yep, one row, I'm going to say, what you say, 15, 20 feet? Yeah, a yeah. mixed. Yeah. Let's say 15 feet. That's eight plants. So does this, okay. Now there's a lot of bonus things that we didn't put on this list here and the one that comes to mind is sweet potatoes which is getting time to plant here in the south. Sweet potatoes is another one that really is a great food source. We left some of the things off but we felt like we covered the staples. Yeah, so if you're going to can, you're going to freeze, you're going to freeze dry, a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. um, then also I didn't talk about but fermenting. Yeah. yeah. We talked about pickling. Mm -hmm. um, all those different ways. All right, I'm gonna let them zoom in on this right here and you can see how our worksheet turned out. And then you could do your own. We can get a real good close up of that. Can we do that? I'm moving the paper a little bit, how about that? <laughs> and we're yeah. gonna have this in the description below. Yep. So you can print it off. Okay. Good planting source for your garden. And you may realize that you ain't got enough of one thing planted, you still got time to get it in the ground, plant some more. Speaking of planting more, I'm gonna plant a few more things. I pretty much got all my garden planted, but I got a few more things I wanna plant. I planted some edamame here the other day. Did you know that? I did, you had a little trouble pronouncing that. I did, but I got it, I got got it pronounced. Edamame. edamame, and I planted some dry beans. So that's a, another great oh, yeah. food source there, is to plant you some beans and pick them and dry them off and put them in jars. Mm -hmm. Have those beans later on next summer to make you some soup and mm -hmm. whatnots out of it. I planted the tapazio bean. Oh, yeah, I like yep. that. Yep. So you still got time to make plans to get a few things mm -hmm. in there. I just planted my seedless watermelon, the transplants. Mm -hmm. Yep, I got one of those blooming. Really? Yep. You reckon one of the old goat is this week? Is he back? Mm -hmm. You have to look and see. You have to look and get and see. For the people that found the old goat last week, mm -hmm. we're going to do a little draw. What do you say? All right. Well, are we ready? Ready. I did that quick. He did do that quick. Oh, Handmade Homestead. Send us your address there and we'll send you some highly coveted house merchandise. Merchandise. Yep. Guards coming in great, y'all. I hope everybody's having as much fun and luck as we are. It looks really good. It's been a dry year. And if we prepare with our drip tape and things like that, dry years normally make an excellent garden year. Last year we had a bunch of rain, head disease, problems. But it looks like it's going to be a good garden year. We just got to make sure we got enough water to make our crops. And that's where that drip, drip comes irrigation in. comes in at. We've been able to shoot the uh, fertilizer and things through there. So every, all my stuff is looking pretty good. Your garden down there is looking. You actually took care of mine a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. you was gone, so yeah, I did that. That's what I do, who I am. 
All right, so don't forget, folks, we got the Hossinator contest. And man, my tomatoes are looking good. Hossinator, and then you grow the Hossinator there, you save your seed pack. And for the biggest Hossinator, we're giving away a $100 gift card from Hoss. And this is for how much it weighs? How much it weighs. So what you got to do is you got to, put the, you got to put the Hossinator on scale. Take a picture with it on the weight on there with your Hossinator seed pack. Send it in to customer service. And uh, we'll look, take a look at it. And so we'll they look. can start sending in as quick as they want. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to end the. Uh, we're not going to end it till later on in the year. Contest ends always thirty first. Okay. So we, we, you got that picture. You got proof. You send it in, and we're going to name the uh, the winner. The, the weight will determine the winner. So we're going on the biggest, the heaviest, hosinator. And uh, I'm going to set the bar for that one. I think. You are? I, I think hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Live up there. Yep. Corny joke. Corny joke. All right, ready. All right. So this corny joke comes from Niles, whose parents are Wes and Angie from the Naked Hog, mm -hmm. and this is one he made up, and he was sure to share it with us. Did he share it with you? Mm, I will say. <laughs> okay. Why did the ice cream ice cream need an umbrella? Why did the ice cream need an umbrella? I don't think you shared that one with me. Because it had sprinkles. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Way to go, Niles. That was good in there. Niles. Niles, is, Niles, Niles is a sport, by the he way. He's a sport. He's got some older sisters that keeps him alive, but he is a really good boy. The whole family is sweet. Mm -hmm. Sweet their family. All right, folks. Garden is in. We're glad you're part of our family. Glad you enjoy and growing your own food as we are. The harvest looks good this year. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for you to get out there and get dirty.